Let your word become light. Let your word, O oh Lord, come like refreshing waters, O oh Lord, on our soul this morning. Touch us. Let the unfolding word become light. We thank you, Lord, that your word has already been established in the heavens. Let your word now be established in our hearts this morning, Lord. Father, I come against every work of the enemy. I come against every spirit of confusion. I come against every spirit of lethargy and tiredness. I come against every lie of the devil. I come against every fear right now. I break its power. Everything that would hinder, Lord, the word of God from penetrating into the souls of men, I break its power right now in the name of Jesus. This whole place, O oh Lord, right now, O oh Lord, be covered by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, according to Psalms 91, Lord, I ask for the ministering angels right now to sit and stand beside every dear child of God here, Lord. To bring ministry, to bring comfort, to bring encouragement. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Today I'm going to talk about a very important person from the Old Testament. Okay. His name is Job. <coughs> uh, wait, let me go there. Why Job? I asked the Lord the same question. You know, why Job? There's so much of uh, uh, things to touch in the Old Testament, uh, in the New Testament. Why Job? Because uh, uh, in, our, uh, in our daily life, okay, what we will go through is similar to what Job goes through. Okay? Yeah. It, it's the same world with the same problem. Okay? The same challenges. Okay? We will face the same enemy. And guess what? We will overcome the enemy because God is good. Amen. Somebody say amen. Because God is good all the time. And all the time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You remember that? All right? Wait one minute. Okay. Today the topic will be called Overcoming the Spirit of Fear. Uh, before I start my message, I want to tell you that fear is not a psychological statement. Okay, fear is not a psychological statement. Although the, the psychologist will tell you it is uh, some mental issue. Okay, and uh, uh, a fear normally, fear's very good friend is called depression. Okay? Uh, before depression, fear's very good husband is called confusion. <laughs> so, so, so confusion and depression got married and they had children. It's called deception. Amen? So they are family. Amen? Don't let this family into your family. Okay? Or, or you will have? You will have confusion. Amen? Now, the word of God is so simple. The ways of God is understandable. The Bible say only a fool will say there is no God because, you know, all the things of God are revelation. Okay, they are not information. You can't get a revelation from the word of God on social media. If you want revelation from God's word, you have to go to the author of the word of God. Who is the author? The Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, what I feel is very impressive about Job, okay, is the faith of the man. Now, Job didn't have a pastor, Job didn't have a church, Job didn't have a cell group, okay, Job, Job didn't have a community to support him. All these things were not known in Job's time. It's about a man, okay, about a man believing in an unseen God, just like Abraham. Now, the, the theologians will tell you that Job, Job is after Noah, okay, and before Abraham. He lived in that era. 
okay, where there is, there is no uh, 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 literal place of worship. And when they want to worship God, they go up on a high plain or a high mountain and they, and they talk to God and God responds. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful relationship. You know, Christianity is a relationship. It's not a religion. Okay, uh, man turned it into a religion. But Christianity is a, a, a relationship with God. Okay, you can walk with God. You can talk with God. You can share your problems with God. You can, uh, you can pour out your heart to God. God understands. And in his time, he will respond. Amen. Now, uh, Job's faith foundation is four. Okay, what is it? Number one, he was blameless. Now, uh, Job wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay, the Holy dispensation of the Holy Spirit not yet fall yet. But look at the character and the integrity of this man. Okay, he was blameless. He was upright. He feared God. And he shunned evil. Let's remember these four. Uh, he was blameless. He was upright. He feared God. And he shunned evil. Okay. This lifestyle produced some evidence in his life. Okay. When you, when you walk right with God, you will see this thing happen. Number one, Job had posterity. Posterity means he had a... Uh, uh, Children, he had how many children? Ten. All right? Seven sons, three daughters. All right? Job had prosperity. Okay, in those days, prosperity is measured by abundance of livestock, sheep. Okay, they, they take the wool and make clothes. Okay, garment industry. You can call it garment industry. Then they had oxen to plow the land. To produce milk, all right? They had camels, okay, uh, for transport, okay. Uh, in Job's time, that's the Mercedes Benz, that is the BMW, that is the Ferrari, and that is the, all the Lexus and the luxury car, camel, okay? Because <laughs> camel can go through desert, okay, uh, for six months without water, you know? That has, that's a wonderful animal, camel. It stores the water and the hump on the back, and they can travel with it. All right? Uh, then there are donkeys. He had donkeys, many, many, many female donkeys. The donkeys are their lorries. Okay? They, they transported all their things. Because donkeys are burden-bearing animals. Okay? So Job had all that. All right? Number three, Job had fame. Okay? Because of his large household... Those days, you know, they don't call family. They call household. Household means uh, uh, the wife, the children, the servants, the servants' children, the servants, husband or wife, you know, all, all in the family. They lived in like a community. It's called a household. A large household so that he was known as uh, the greatest people of the East. I mean, not, his fame was not just in the country. His fame was a region. He was a, in a modern day time, we can say, like Bill Gates, Warren Buffet, or, you know, all this guy, he is a multi-millionaire. Okay, multi-millionaire. All right? Third, the outworking of the faith of Job, Job 1.5. Okay? Although he, he was a rich man, Job never forget God. That's a, that's a character. Amen? No matter how you go, how high you go in life, your roots must be deep. Amen? You know, in the construction industry, they say, uh, the latest skyscraper they built in KL is called 118, I think. Merdeka 118. Huh? Okay. Merdeka 118 is uh, now the tallest building in the world. But you know, the... The, the foundation of Merdeka 118 is almost more than 10 miles deep. The foundation has to be deep so the structure can stand. Amen? It's a, it's a, there's a spiritual value in the 
things like this. Amen? The higher you go, up, okay? You go up in altitude, you must be strengthened in your attitude. <laughs> no attitude, no altitude. That's why you, the stronger you are, the, the, the more you attain fame, the more you attain wealth, the more you attain uh, f uh, a favor, the more people know you, okay? You must know God, okay, and be known by God. We are, we are coming to that, okay? So what, what uh, this guy, uh, uh, Job, will do, okay? Job had 10 children who, who believed in party on. <laughs> nothing wrong with party on, nothing wrong with celebration, okay? But what he will do, just in case, la, you know, uh, those days party all got wine, all right? In the Middle East, they drank more wine than, than water. Water is very expensive. So what they do, they will take uh, fruits and they turn it into fruit juice. Okay, and wine, they added a little bit more to make the uh, fruit juice a little bit more tasty and end up alcoholic. <laughs> okay, wine. All right. Just in case his 10 children, in the heat of the party on, okay, some curse words came out to curse God and and it would bring judgment. What Job will do, he will uh, 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 build ten altars. At the end, at the end of the party, he'll call all his ten children. Okay, build ten altars. Okay, offer a, a, a burnt offering. Okay, like like uh, uh, Abraham burnt offering to atone for his children. All right, so that's what he will do. All right, now. Job's uh, lifestyle, the way he served God, the way he believed God, his, his lifestyle, okay, what happened? His righteousness penetrated into the spirit realm. Who is in the spirit realm? God is in the spirit realm. Satan is also in the spirit realm. It penetrated into the spirit realm, okay? God observed his life. Satan also observed his life. Meaning, Satan knew who Job was. Amen? Let's go on. Alright? I'm coming into part two. It's called the demonic storm. This is where everything in Job's life collapses. Amen? Alright? Not that Job was a sinner. Not that Job sinned against God. Not that uh, he did something very... Uh, abominable. But it, this is a test. Amen? A test. Alright? In that test, okay, two divine beings had a communication. <laughs> Who are they? One is God, one is Satan. Now the word, the word Satan will not appear regularly in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible. It only appears very few times in the Bible. Okay? Uh, in the book of Job, in Isaiah and in Ezekiel. Other than that, Satan, the name Satan doesn't appear, alright? But his, his work, what he's doing, okay, is evident. Alright? Job chapter 1, 8 to 9. Now, I want you to understand, okay, if Job's faith, his lifestyle, he... I want to tell you that he didn't have a pastor, he didn't have a church, he didn't have a community to support him, he, didn't, he wasn't baptized in water and he wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit, he didn't speak in tongues. Amen? He didn't have all these privileges that we enjoy now. Still, that man's faith penetrated the heavens. Okay? Can your faith and my faith penetrate, penetrate the heavens? Oh, yes. In fact, the Bible says we are already seated in the heavenly places far above the principality and the powers. Where is it stated? In Ephesians. Okay? We can find for me the scripture verse. I'll give you a present. Not this time. Next time. Okay? You are seated in the heavenly place far above the principality and the powers. Already established. 
Amen. Today we fall victim to the work of the enemy. We fall victim to the devil. Because we do not understand our position. Amen. Now, if Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who are you? You are also a king and you are also a lord. Okay? You, can, you cannot be like Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but you are already royalty. That's why the Bible says we are royal priesthood, holy nation, taken out of the kingdom of darkness and put in the kingdom of his marvelous light. Amen. So we fall victim to the, to the devil. We fall victim to, to, uh, to darkness. We fall victim to sin. We fall victim to addictions. Because we do not understand our position in Christ. Amen. Okay, let's go on. Now, there is a consideration on all of God's children in the realm of the spirit. There's a consideration. God knows who you are. God knows the devil also knows who you are. Amen? <laughs> now, don't be afraid if the devil knows who you are. If the devil knows you are, he, uh, he is already defeated in your life. Amen? Right. So what happened? Uh, let's read um, uh, uh, Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Okay. Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro and on the earth and from walking back and forth in it. Amen. So that's what the enemy is doing. Now, uh, uh, before Christ, okay, before Christ, Satan can go back into God's presence and he can meet God face to face. Amen. He can go and visit his whole old company, <laughs> his whole backyard. Anyway, he that's what he was doing. Okay, he is in charge of. Uh, guarding the entrance through the throne of God. He can go back there and he can talk to God. Amen. After Jesus was, uh, Jesus was uh, died, rose again, ascended into heaven, Satan completely cannot enter into God's presence. He can go up to the third, uh, third heaven, he can go up to the third heaven, he can wait outside and it and, he, and he, he can talk to God, and God will talk. Amen. That, that, that's the order. So this time he went. Now, there's something very mysterious in this passage, if you, if you like to go and research. Okay. Now, all the rest of the angels didn't know it was Lucifer. <laughs> they didn't know it was Mr. Lucifer. All right. He came as an angel of light. I read this passage many, 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 many times. He, he appeared as an angel of, the, of light. He appeared like one of them. All right? The angels didn't know, but he didn't miss the x-ray eyes of God. Amen? He recognized Satan for who he was. And he said, Satan, you, what have, have you been doing and where have you been going? And he said, I've, I've been traveling all over the world. All right? So, then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless man, upright man, who fears God and shuns evil? Amen. Today, Jesus is also saying, Have you considered my servant? Have you considered my children? That they are already redeemed. That they are going to be victorious. That they are going to crush your head. That they are going to destroy your works. You know, that's how powerful you are. That's how powerful you are. You know, I, I, I did deliverance on a, on a Chinese guy, okay, in my living room. You know, this Chinese guy had, uh, had 25 demonic spirits 
in his body. Amen. Not easy. He, t- he took uh, over one year and slightly more for the guy to be delivered. Okay. Uh, every time he comes under the power of darkness, he comes uh, and calls me or comes to my house and say, you know, Pastor, the demons are terrorizing me. They want me to jump out of my apartment and commit suicide. Or they want me to do this and that. I only tell this guy only one thing. You know, you know, uh, Jason, you know, the Christ in you is more powerful than the devil that's attacking you. Do you believe? If you believe, Jason, you can be delivered. No problem. Mo mantai. Mo mantai, correct, huh? <laughs> no problem. Do you believe? Then, then uh, he will, in all the weakness, he say, yes, pastor, I believe. Okay, let's do it. One, two, three, four, 25, all went out. Today he is, you know, uh, uh, no church will allow him inside the, inside the uh, church. No cell group will uh, allow him inside uh, their cell group. No people will allow him into their house. Because, you know, when, when worship starts, table chair will go flying. <laughs> Table chair will go flying. I don't know what gets broken. TV or what gets broken. You know, he will terrorize the ent- entire group. <laughs> and then he, he will leave. So nobody ever uh, uh, dared to allow him inside their home. But today this guy is delivered. Praise God. You know, I want to tell you, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. So Satan answered the Lord and said, listen to this carefully. Yeah? He, he answered the Lord okay, and said, does Job fear God for nothing? That means, you know, you know God, Job is serving you for an agenda. Lah. It's for an agenda. It's only for the blessing. Job doesn't love you. Job is not interested in glorifying you. It is, he's only interested in the blessing. Amen. And you know, Satan said, God, I know why Job prosper. This is why Job prosper. Have you not made a hedge around his household, around uh, uh, all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hand, and his possession has increased. In the land. God is prospering because you, you are protecting him. Let's put him to the test, God. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of God. That's where all the problem started. Amen. You know, 70% of the problem is spiritual because we are spiritual beings. Amen. Uh, born again experience is five minutes. I tell people, born again experience is five minutes. But your, the cleansing job in your life is a lifetime. It's not five minutes. <laughs> like, like Jason. Okay, it took a year before the 25 demons all left him and never came back. Okay, after that comes uh, counseling. After that comes, you know, they all leave damages behind. After that, you have to, you have to help them uh, deal with damages in their emotion, damages in their mind, damages in their confidence level, damages in their self-esteem. Okay? Damages, the physical damages in their body. Okay? But you know, uh, 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 many times, you know, uh, God allows storms. Okay? To prove a point, God allows, God is not the creator of the storm. God allows the storm to prove a point. God allows the storm to uh, expose, okay, some kind of flaw in your life. Thank God for that. Okay? 
that that floors are called open doors we will we will look at it further down in this message it's called open doors amen and the storms when they expose the open doors then you know oh so this is the pintu blakang <laughs> the enemy has been using to access my life oh no wonder i'm sick all the time so this is the pintu blakang the back door oh now i understand why you know i cannot prosper i keep losing money why every business i start keeps going bankrupt why i'm always in debt why there's a back door in our life and many times the function of the storm is to expose back doors in our life amen you know uh, in john 10:10 uh, uh, jesus said i came to give you life and life in abundance you know in the greek the word abundance is you know what it's called hooper parisos the greek doesn't recognize h uh, uh, s becomes h la okay hooper parisos means super abundance amen so much that you don't know what to do with it you give it away super abundance okay so now the question is do you want abundant life or abandoned life <laughs> think about it hey don't make a t-shirt and wear it around okay negative thought <laughs> do you want abundant life or abandoned life all right today the hedge of protection we also have a hedge of protection you know the hedge of protection is called the blood of the lamb that's what protecting you that's why other people die in accident you don't that's why other businesses go into a bankruptcy your businesses still stand intact you know i had a guy in uh, in cebu okay i did house cleansing for him okay we uh, disposed six gunny sacks full of things idols talisman all kinds of things okay you know after that happened you know what happened during covid 2020 uh, 2021 every other business was going down his business was going up suddenly you know all the debtors call one floor owe him 100000 one floor owe him 500000 one floor owe him 50000 one floor owe him 20000 all the floors owe him thousands and thousands okay called him one by one and said uh uh something spoke to us we feel like we want to return back your money so 2020 2021 the man's business went debt free you know no debt okay uh, here all the businesses are closing he gets a huge consignment for papua new guinea you know he is a mechanic expert in uh, toyota hilux and land cruisers and uh, excavators all that so he is exporting hallelujah exporting 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 you see you know so when you when we decide to set our lives right god knows what to do god knows how to bless amen next is the demonic devastation all right uh, you can read it in job chapter 1 verse 11 to 20 okay Satan challenges you see how cunning satan is satan challenges god to touch job so god will get the bad name god turned around he said i allow you to touch him he is in your power but don't touch his life okay god allowed satan to have power over job because it is against god's nature to do evil i want you to understand that so all the evil that you have experience you may experience or you going to experience never came from god it came from the enemy you right but what god did god set a perimeter for satan everything satan you can touch everything this is a test on job i'm allowing you okay to be a freelance examiner i'm allowing you but you are forbidden to touch the man's life okay hedge now is on job's life and everything else satan wasted 
Job 1.20, in five waves, okay, Satan destroyed everything in Job's life. These five waves are the same strategy Satan will use against believers. We are, we are, we are already in the end times. Okay? You look at the news, we, you look at the technology. Okay, you, uh, uh, the technology you see okay, is slowly edging towards Antichrist. Okay? Uh, uh, I was, uh, when I was studying uh, computer science, Okay, AI was only being discussed as a, as a theory, as an idea. <laughs> now I'm 51, I'm seeing uh, in my own eyes, what I studied as a theory, as an idea, is a reality now. Amen? <coughs> so five waves, what are the five waves? It destroyed Job's prosperity in one wave. All ten children died. <coughs> okay? The whole community around him would have said, you know, the, here is a person that is so cursed. Bad luck, bad karma, <laughs> and what not. You know, posterity died, gone. Family just wiped out. In one earthquake, all right, one wind, not earthquake, one wind blew, all ten children died. You know, the, imagine the, the sorrow and imagine the, the shock on this man's life, all right. Bearing one, one uh, child is difficult. <laughs> Actually, children supposed to bury parents, right? Okay. It is very painful thing when the when, when the parent now have to bury the children, you know. Bury one children. This is ten, you know. You got ten uh, children lying side by side down there. Okay, and the father watching, his whole uh, life gone. Next prosperity was gone. Textile industry gone. Sheep all got burnt. Fire fell down from heaven, burn all the sheep. Transport industry gone. All the donkeys also died. Okay? Uh, uh, what happened to the camels? Is Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Lexus, all, everything, everything got stolen. <coughs> all right? Prosperity gone. His economy was gone. From, from uh, uh, a prince, he's reduced to the, to become a pauper. From the palace, now he's living in a platform. Just like that. Okay? Third, health was gone. Okay? Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. You know, I used to do hospital ministry those days in my youth. You know, uh, we go to the T4 ward in University Hospital. No, T4 is a terminal. Terminal means a doctor has given a death sentence. All children. You know what the parents will tell? You know, brother, if, I, if, I, if, if it's possible to heal my child, I'll give all of my wealth. Everything. If there's a cure. But, but the sad thing is there's no cure. It's terminal. The next time we visit the same ward, the bed will be empty. What happened to this patient? He died last night. All right? Health. Then marriage was going down the drain because the wife is now saying, you know, are you this God? Uh? Are, you, are you sure you serve the right God? Uh? <laughs> I think you better curse this God and die. There's no point serving this God. So marriage was in, on the rocks. Okay, after, after that, don't know what happened. Lah. Okay, but about the wife not mentioned. The wife died and he remarried or nothing not mentioned. Maybe the wife repented, okay? The, the end of the story, God restored everything in Job's life. Then Job's testimony was gone. The three good friends, uh, supposed to be good friends, I call them worthless friends. 
they never came and give any encouragement for the man they only came to accuse and find fault you know when when the storm hits you that is when you will know okay who your friends are when everything is going well in life you know everybody is laughing and cheering you on but when the storm hits you you know then you will know who your friends are amen so storms are good good eye opener okay satan's agenda is the same for a modern day christian he's never changed and he will never change okay the same things that i mentioned here in this list is the same thing he wants to do to god's children amen let's go on i'm coming to the last part recognizing the open door okay so you you must understand something satan has absolutely no access in your life no no absolutely no access unless at some part of your life there's an open door okay job 325 exposes the open door in job's life okay this is job's confession he said for everything which i greatly feared has come upon me and that which i was afraid has come upon me so it tells us something okay why the sacrifice huh? for all the ten children with what motive he was afraid that judgment will fall fear okay when when he said naked i came into the world god giveth and god taketh away you know that is a false presumption god never takes away god never 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 ever takes away what he has given us it is lost because of our irresponsibility it is lost because of our lack of faith it is lost because we step out of the will of god it is lost because we, we allow the devil into our life at some point through negligence sin ignorance we allow the enemy in, inside all right so although although job's spiritual life seemed to be intact there is a breach or a crack in his shield of faith fear was a clear and present open door in job's life all right thus everything that job did even though it looked right had a fearful motivation behind it amen you know uh, fear fear is the acronym of false evidence appearing real <coughs> false evidence the the devil is a liar and a father of lies he will tell you you're sick when you're healthy he will tell you when you're broke when you have money <laughs> he will tell you you're going to die at this age like this and like that <laughs> don't believe his lies believe in god's word build your life on god's word build your life on the truth of god's word build your life on the firm foundation don't build your life on sinking ground all right of worldly wisdom okay uh second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says for god has not given us you see god has not given us a spirit of fear that is why i tell you fear is not a psychological statement fear is a spirit if fear is a spirit then you have the authority to cast it out amen for god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind okay uh, fear another word for fear uh, in greek is called merim now merim now means that to divide the mind when you are fearful that's what happens right a hundred different thoughts cross your mind one problem a hundred different types of uh, thoughts cross your mind can i solve the problem like this should i solve the problem like that i know why i did this you know i regret i did this 
<laughs> Why did I do that? Why did I, did I do it like this? Why didn't I do it like that? Marry him now. Amen? That divides the mind. Then after that, what do you do? Okay? It's called analysis till paralysis. <laughs> analyze, 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 analyze. Okay? Until you paralyze in fear. Amen? So, and when you ha that happens, that is when the spirit of fear comes in. Spirit of fear comes in when some, uh, some trauma happened in, uh, in, in many people's life, some traumatic experience in their life, fear came in. The traumatic experience became an open door. Okay? So in your uh, time with God, all this you have to bring into the presence of God and ask the Lord to deal with it. Amen? The, uh, the word for fear in the Greek is called phobos. Okay? In English, it's called phobia. Have you heard no phobia? Huh? Hydrophobia, fear of water, acronophobia, fear of insects. There are people who fear uh, sleeping in the dark. <coughs> okay, they, they must have their light on. Or they must have a night light. You know, it's a, that is actually a very deep issue. <coughs> people who fear, they will fall sick. People who fear, people got fear of death. <coughs> All kinds of fear. It is a spirit. Jesus died on the cross to set us free from fear. Right? Hebrews 2.14, he says, Since the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise partook the same, that through death he might destroy who had the power of death, that is the devil. What do you think Jesus was going through in the garden of Gethsemane? What do you think he was going through? It was fear, you know. He, he had to overcome the fear to go to the next level, which is the cross. You know, uh, uh, Jesus' uh, uh, mission on earth is to die on the cross. Everything else was added. The healing, the deliverance, the uh, uh, opening of the blind, whatever he did. Okay? It was an act of compassion. But what was Jesus' mission? His mission was to die on the cross. Okay? The scribe and the Pharisees didn't understand. His family didn't understand. Even his own disciples didn't understand. But the mission was that. And in the garden of Gethsemane, this is what Jesus uh, 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 overcame. It's called fear. That is why three times he's praying. If it is possible, please remove this cup. You know? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. All right? Hebrews 2.15 says like this. And deliver those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All right? That's what fear will do. Fear keeps you as its slave, chained. You know? It's a, it's a, it's a special chain. It's a, it's a lengthy chain. Fear allows you to go from here to there, but not beyond. So there will be always be a limitation on your life. You need to break that. Amen? Because God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a destiny for your life. Amen? Don't forfeit that because of fear. Okay, I'm coming to a close of the message. Do you know we have authority to cast out the spirit of fear? First thing, uh, John 4, 18 says, There is no... Fear in love. But perfect love cast out fear because fear has torment and he who fears has not been perfected in love. So what you need to do, you need to come into God's presence and you need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with the Father's love. Okay? Only when you are filled with the Father's love, you can forgive you can bless, okay? You can be a person full of faith. You can walk in faith. You can walk in the glorious and miraculous and the supernatural. All right? 
love. Do, do pastors have fear? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we are not angels on wings. We don't have angels in our back. And we don't have wings. Okay? We are human just like you. You know, uh, my, my wife just uh, delivered a healthy baby boy on Merdeka Day. Okay? Uh, to 12.45 p.m. All right? Uh, uh, months before that, okay, I, I was experiencing fear how to pay the hospital bill. I know the hospital bill is going to be big. Okay, it's a cesarean birth, so you can consider it as a surgery. You know, so uh, I took her to the government hospital. I, I came to a point, I said, God, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. I know you are my provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are able to, you know, provide for me, okay? More than what I think or imagine, according to the, your power, you know? I remembered everything God uh, did for me. I remembered how I came into full-time ministry with zero. Uh, I remembered how, you know, that white car that's standing in front of your church was paid by a person who, who I don't know. All right? <laughs> I only received a note in my... In my post box, Pastor Judah Henry go to the bank every month. There'll be this amount of money for your car. That's all. No signature, no surname, no nothing, no postcode, nothing. All right, paid. All right. I I remember how uh, when I went to India mission trip, money just multiplied in my bank. Hundred ringgit became three thousand ringgit. Where it came, how it came, who put the money inside, all I don't know. Okay. So I say, God, if you did all this for me, then you will do this for me. So, uh, you know what happened? On, uh, on Merdeka Day, uh, at 10 o'clock, wife started bleeding, so I took her to the hospital. Okay, so they seized her, they took the baby out. Okay, and then it, it is time to face the Goliath medical bill. <laughs> so I go there. I sit at the counter, waiting for the guy to come out with the bill. The bill came out, and it was stated there, <coughs> uh, total $4,600, okay? And it was written in big, bold letters, subsidized by the government of Malaysia. Hallelujah. You know how much I paid and came out? 150 ringgit I paid, I happily came out. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. What God uh, did for me, He can do for you. Amen. What, what's, what's your problem? What is your need? Bring it to God and say, God, you know, to tell you honestly, God, I don't know how to solve this. I don't know what to do. I give it to you. You handle it. Amen. So last point, okay? We have authority in Luke ten nineteen, okay, to cast out the spirit of fear. What does Luke ten nineteen say? Anybody can remember? Behold, I give you all some authority, little bit of authority, a piece of authority. What what does it say? All. A-L-L. -A -L. All means all. La. Huh? You all went to school and learned English, right? <laughs> I don't have to tell you what all is. All means all. Amen? I give you all authority to trample upon serpent, scorpion, and all the power of the devil. Amen? Why is there so much a problem in the church today? Is because, why? Okay, we put the responsibility on one person's head, okay, and we're all here for a party. No, the church is not a nightclub, the church is a battle station. The church is where warriors are trained. Okay, you are to be trained as warriors, not warriors. Not worry, 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 worry. Warriors. Learn how to fight. Learn how to take your... Know who you are in Christ. Learn to take up your authority. 
Okay? Le learn to put an end to all the works of the devil. That is why you, you, you come to church. Amen? The authority. Okay? To close the door to fear, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with the Father's love. Amen? Because you cannot face the world full of hate, fear, darkness without God's love. Okay? If you do that, you will become like the world. That is why uh, 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 1 John 1 9 says this. I'm going to close here. <coughs> do not what? Do not love the world. The word love there is an is a intimate uh, language. You know, it's like a husband and wife. <laughs> do not love the world. Don't love the things of the world. Okay? Wait, let me close with this, huh? It says, say, 1 John, uh, 1 John 1 15, sorry, yeah? Okay? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world is passing away, the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So what is the will of God? The will of God is love. To be so in love with God. You only can overcome what's around you when you have God's love. Look at the fish in the, in the, in the water. Look at the fish in the rivers. Look at the fish in the, in the sea. You know, although the sea is so salty, yeah, when you catch the fish and you fry the fish or you make curry or you make steam, does it taste salty? If, if it still tastes salty, that means your fault. La. <laughs> when you're cooking, you accidentally put more salt in the, in the, in the, in the fish already, so it's salty. But it's not salty. The, how come the flesh is sweet? <laughs> Have you ever wondered how come the flesh is sweet? The fish is in the sea. Okay. The coconut tree grows by the seaside, same sea water, the flesh is touching its roots. But when you cut ay klapa muda, is ay klapa muda masin? No, ay klapa muda got a little bit of monies. How come? They are created by God to persevere in their environment. Same like us. Amen? So let's pray. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Come worship him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word of God this morning, Lord. Father, I thank you that every person gathered here is so precious in your sight. They are so important, Lord. Every person here, Lord, is formed in their mother's womb with great fear and honor. And there's a destiny put in their life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. I pray this morning. I thank you for this word that has gone forth. I pray that you touch every person here, Lord. Lord, I don't know what they are going through, Lord, but you know it all. And Lord, I thank you that you have a, a solution for all their problem, whatever difficulty they are going through, Father. You have prepared a way out. You have to prepare an escape route for them, Father. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you this morning, this wonderful Sunday morning. We worship you. We worship you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done in our life. We thank you for what you are able to do. What you have done, what you are able to do, and what you are going to do, Lord, in the days to come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
I pray this morning, O oh Lord, that the Father's love will just begin to fill every heart here, Lord. The heart may be hardened because of the hardship they have gone through, Lord. The heart may have been hardened because of the storms that have hit their life, Lord. But I thank you, Father, that even right now, Jesus, you love your people just the same. You love your house. You love your people. You love your servants just the same. And I thank you that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, much more than what we think or imagine according to the power that is at work in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even right now, just begin to permeate and saturate every person here this morning. Even right now, Lord, let every uh, defense of unforgiveness, every defenses, fences of bitterness, heaviness, sadness, grief, anxiety, everything, O oh Lord, be destroyed by the fire of God. Rakaba, ribaka, rokobo, ribaka, rakaba. Rikabaka, rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba. You know, if you need prayer, please come forward. God wants to touch you this morning. Rakaba, ribaka. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Rokobo, ribaka, rakaba, ya rakaba, ribaka, rakaba, ribaka, rakaba, rakaba. Roko bori baka raka bari baka raka bari raka bari baka. Roko bori baka raka bari baka. Fresh touch of the Holy Spirit, like a river, just began to flow through the sanctuary, flow through and touch every person here this morning. Lord, rika baka raka ba. Roko boro ko boro ko boro ko boro ko boro. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray Jesus now Come on, just worship God Jesus now 
We are standing in His presence on holy ground. Just keep singing that song. Touch Holy Spirit. 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 The Father's love just began to flood, 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 flood. On holy ground. Thank you, Lord, that all our tears are going to be turned into joy. Fire of God, fire of the Holy Spirit, fire of the Holy Spirit, fire of the Holy Spirit, fire of the Holy Spirit. Yes, touch, touch his dear daughter, Lord. Roko bori baka rakaba, rakaba rakaba. Rakaba rakaba. I know there are angels all around. Rakaba rakaba rakaba. And I know rakaba rakaba. Rakaba rakaba rakaba. Let us praise Jesus now. God is going to use you as an evangelist. God is going to take you to Taiwan. God is taking you to China. God is taking you to Southeast Asian nations. You know, you will win many, many souls for Jesus. Rokobo Ribaka. Rokobo Rokobo. And I see you standing on a stage. You know, be, before you are thousands of people, you know, as you wave your hand, God moves in a supernatural way and many are going to get healed and delivered and saved. You have a calling, my dear sister. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Now I sense the Lord say, you are my end time warrior. You are my end time warrior. You are my end time harvester. I sense the Lord say, you have a, I have a destiny, plan and a purpose for your life. I pray for a fresh fire. I pray for a fresh anointing. I pray for hindrances to be broken. I pray for fear to leave in Jesus' name. Rakaba, rakaba, rakaba. Fresh touch of the Holy Spirit just begin to flood, 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 flood right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, spirit of rejection, let her go in the name of Jesus. Spirit of rejection, let her go in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you have formed her in a mother's womb with a destiny and a purpose in her life. Rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba. Rakaba, rakaba. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Everything that this young man sets forth to do, cause it to prosper in the name of Jesus. Rika Baka. Bless his hands, Lord. Bless his hands, Lord. Bless his hands, Lord. Bless his hands, Lord. 
Bless his hands, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Rika baka raka baraka 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 more and more and more and more. All the Father's love just begin to feel this man right now in Jesus' name. Rika baka raka baraka Spirit of barrenness broken in his life in the name of Jesus. Cause him to economically prosper.